good morning and welcome to Unity of Springfield and Springfield, Missouri. And we are so excited. It's been a year and so many months before we were last here in class. So we're actually <coughs> physically here at Unity of Springfield and we Can you want tell? you to be here too. And we do have a class. It's totally amazing. And thank you for all showing up and being here with us today. Uh, we have James Masters. Uh, today, and James is going to be talking on Ho, -ho a Pono Pono. There we go. <laughs> oh, Pono Pono. And I, I know I've said it before, we've talked about this in our Course in Miracles class, but um, when, uh, we you know, didn't have discussions on that. I know a little bit about it, but I'm so excited that James is going to be doing this uh, topic today. Um, but I just want us to go ahead and we always love doing just kind of opening, centering, meditation, prayer, whatever. So let's go ahead and just close our eyes. And just for a few seconds, remember where we are and who we are and why we are here. And what a blessing it is to actually be able to see and to feel to speak with each other, and to connect in ways that we weren't able to for over a year. What a blessing that is to me, and what a blessing it is to this church and all of our members. We celebrate that life, that life that's in us, in every one of us, and how we can grow so much from that connection. Take a deep breath. A deep breath in and let that energy just vibrate in every cell in our body. All those countless cells that are working for you every moment of every day of your life. And know you are the absolute presence and power of God working inside of you. And you have that ability to shine your light. And we just ask Holy Spirit to allow our light to shine. Shine for ourselves and shine for those all around us that we see Namaste. Namaste. And I give you James Masters. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I have to turn the on the microphone. Okay. Uh, it's nice to see actual physical faces instead of just talking to a screen for these classes. I'm really excited about this. And this morning, I'm going to talk about Ho'oponopono, and I'm sort of going to talk about my own journey and then explain Ho'oponopono because I've had a really unique, long journey with this particular practice. And so, um, that's really what I want to get, talk about today is, is my journey as well as how it's influenced my life and sort of what it means, what Ho'oponopono means. And the definition of Ho'oponopono is not a four-line prayer. A lot of people think that Ho'oponopono means this four-line prayer, but it actually means to make right or to rectify an error. Ho'oponopono, the pono pono part, means to make right what is already right. And so what Ho'oponopono means is it means to restore or rectify. And I was introduced to Ho'oponopono from a meditation group. Someone uh, told me about this gentleman who uh, taught Ho'oponopono and how he used it, and they told me his story. Um, and it's Dr. Here's one that I'm going to have issues pronouncing. E. Well, let's see. I, I practiced this yesterday. Ialia Kala, Ialia Kala. Hugh Lin, and this gentleman um, used Ho'oponopono, and this is the story someone told me. He was a psychiatrist, psychologist, I believe he was a psychologist, and he was asked to be a, um, the head over a prison for people who have mental issues, people who were criminally insane. And he hesitated at first. Um, he was trained in Ho'oponopono, and he hesitated at first. Then he decided, you know what, I will take over this, uh, this residency, and, um, but I'm not going to see any of the patients. 
I'm going to use this method of rectifying errors and uh, you know, to, to deal with the, the prisoners. And so what he did was he used, uh, he took all of the files of every prisoner, he took the files of the people that worked there, and he just did this practice of ho'oponopono, rectifying any error thinking that he had. So what he dealt with was things like judgments that he had against other people based off of their crimes, and he worked through that so he could move into a place of loving, love and acceptance. And he used a, you know, this specific practice that he goes around teaching today. And eventually, people started becoming well. People who were literally criminally insane were being able to be released because they were no longer insane. And it not only influenced the, uh, the people that were in prison, it influenced the people that were working at the prison. And eventually, all of the prisoners were able to go somewhere else or, you know, they're served their time and were set free. And so I was very intrigued, but I was very uh, naive also, because I was told that the Ho'oponopono was this four-line prayer. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I used this for years, uh, and it worked really effectively. In fact, one time I was baking something in like a 400-degree oven, and I reached in and grabbed and pulled out the oven sheet without even thinking, just with my bare hand. And I was, and I put it back, I put it on the stove. So I held it for long enough to be a severe burn. And uh, I, I learned from Louise Hay, instead of saying, this is a lot of pain, I started going, there's a lot of sensation in my hand right now. <laughs> a lot of sensation, because I didn't want to like adopt the pain. And then I sat down and I started using Ho'oponopono. And, I, and I, at first I thought for sure I'd need to go to the hospital, but as I calmed myself down, I noticed that the sensation that I had was dissipating. It was starting to go down, starting to go away. And when I looked down, my fingers weren't even. And that was, my, that was one of my first actual experiences of how this, you know, had a dramatic impact in my own life and, and, you know, the experience that I had with this one prayer. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. But again, I was very naive. I didn't really understand what Ho'oponopono was. In fact, if somebody were to ask me what Ho'oponopono was, I'd say, oh, it's this four-line prayer. I didn't even know the definition of it. But, and, and so in this talk, I wanted to make a distinction between traditional Ho'oponopono and the type of Ho'oponopono that most of us have talked about, including this four-line prayer. Um, traditional Ho'oponopono it, it's, has many systems, and it's from the Hawaiian tradition. And uh, the first one is Lomi Lomi, which is a form of body work, a massage. We actually have a woman named Robin Lee here in Springfield that does Lomi Lomi that uh, restores the body to its rightful place. Um, it deals with spiritual conflict, which is more of what uh, the type of Ho'oponopono that I practice, what it deals with. Um, you know, it rectifies things like karma, co uh, family conflict, conflict between people, uh, inner conflict, which is the main goal of the type of Ho'oponopono that I practice. But, you know, it, it is associated with removal of curses in the tradition of Ho'oponopono in Hawaii. Um, and clearing spaces. So there's a belief within uh, the Hawaiian tradition that if something happened within a, a particular place, like a, an act of violence or something, that energy would stay until someone cleared it out. And so a shaman or someone would go and clear out that old energy to kind of renew the, um, the space that you know, had this dark energy. Um, and actually, uh, Hugh Lin, Dr. Hugh Lin, talks a little bit about this, and he calls it cleaning. And he says, when you go into a space, just walk around and use this, you know, four-line prayer and clean the space and, and, you know, restore the energy as well. So that is something that in this version of Ho'oponopono is used. So eventually I uh, had the opportunity to take a seven-day uh, intensive on the whole Ho'oponopono, like the whole of what it means, the traditional. We talked a little bit about the traditional, but then we talked a lot about um, the this new version that um, Dr. Hewlin uh, taught. Dr. Hewlin studied under uh, the kahuna named Morna Nalamuka. Nalamaka. 
and I practiced all of these. <laughs> um, and I was doing really well, anyway. Um, but yeah, he practiced in the kahuna. Kahuna just means the one that holds the secret or the one that, you know, it really is a teacher within uh, that culture. And uh, Morna Nala Mahu uh, brought this uh, Ho'oponopono and brought this Hawaiian tradition into the larger conversation. She addressed the UN and taught them different aspects of Ho'oponopono. Now, this is not uh, the same thing as all of the traditional things that the, you know, that the Hawaiians did. This was the new, sort of like a new version of it. And I always think of it like this, you know, we are in unity and, you know, I've been in New Thought for a long time. Unity, unity sort of stemmed from Christianity. So it's not really this, you know, it's, it has references to, but it's not quite the same thing. And so if you're talking to a traditional Hawaiian and you say, oh, well, I do this spiritual practice of Ho'oponopono, if they practice traditional Ho'oponopono, they may say, oh no, that's, <laughs> that's really not what it is. You know, you're, you're sort of misinformed. But this kahuna was actually, uh, you know, someone who studied the traditional and sort of it evolved sort of like Christianity to unity or new thought. And I mean, that, and that's, I believe, how spirituality sort of works. Even within unity, I've been taking a lot of classes and there's, diff there's two different unities. There's the Fillmore unity, more of a traditional. And then there's the, uh, you know, more new thought unity, which is more similar to um, science of mind and that sort of thing. And there's definitely, as you take classes, if you take classes with other churches, you'll begin to notice, and we've had conversations in classes about the difference and the distinction between the Fillmore unity, who's very traditional in the Fillmore's teachings, and then sort of uh, the, the new thought that would include things like Ho'oponopono. And they, they are, there is a distinction there. And so we evolve and we grow. And um, so Dr. Hugh Lin, I'm not pronouncing that name again, um, <laughs> he expanded it even further. And he developed a method called the Sith Ho'oponopono. And everyone that I know of that has even heard of Ho'oponopono, this is what they're talking about, the Sith method, which is sort of an unfortunate name yeah. if you've ever, uh, you know, watched Star Wars. <laughs> but Sith in uh, Ho'oponopono actually means self-identity through Ho'oponopono. And so this is a very narrow uh, understanding of Ho'oponopono, the, the method. It's a very narrow understanding in comparison to the traditional. It uses uh, sort of like how we use the Bible in unity, but we don't necessarily use it the same way as the traditional religion. It's sort of the same thing. Um, and it's all about connecting to the universal mind is, is what this is all about. And it's the, the practice is called Nakala. Nakala means, uh, well, Nakala is the fortune of forgiveness is what we talk, we, what we say in um, the Ho'oponopono sort of community. And it refers to the power of forgiveness, the power of our ability to untangle. In fact, kala, the word na means uh, the, and kala means to untie or unbind. And I don't know if you've ever had any issues that you really need, you know, you had to forgive. Uh, no. Never. <laughs> no, none of us have ever dealt with any problems like that. But it does feel like untangling and unbinding. And a lot of our, especially if, it ha if something happens when we're really young, a lot of our identity can be tied up in these things and it can affect, you know, many areas of our life. And so uh, I really like, uh, you know, that how Ho'opono teaches that this is like an untangling. As we practice these things, as, we be, as our consciousness becomes enlightened, as we, uh, you know, begin to untangle, we, we are set free. So to untie or to set free is what Kala is. And so in Ho'oponopono, there are three minds. Amakua, Uhane, and Unahipiri. And uh, Anamakua, it, it means father. Uhane means mother. And Unahipiri means child or literally grasshopper. But <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the dynamic of child within these three minds of human consciousness, the way that Ho'oponopono teaches.
And these are levels of consciousness. So the first level of, or the highest level of con consciousness, amakua, is, uh, is the connection we have to the divine. That's what the, the highest level is. And you don't have to remember these words. I'm just giving you sort of the umbrella over how we understand this. But mm -hmm. the huhani, the conscious mind, is how we experience the world. It's, it's our interpretation of our reality. And it's what we're experiencing right now in interaction, you know, with each other. That is the conscious mind. And una, una hipili is the subconscious mind, or the unconscious mind is oftentimes what people will say uh, in Ho'oponopono. And this is the, the part of ourselves that breathes our body. It's, you know, it's the part of ourselves that um, uh, stores information. In fact, in Ho'oponopono, it's the, we, a lot of times for the Sith version, we say this is memory. That's what the unahapili is. It's memory. It's how things are created, and it's through memory. And the goal in Ho'oponopono is to understand how consciousness works, how this mind works. And so the, the higher consciousness and the subconscious have a direct link to each other. So they can communicate with each other directly. The subconscious in Ho'oponopono, the subconscious mind and the conscious mind can also communicate with each other directly. See, the challenge with it, and this is called the oh, the Aka is what it's called. And Aka uh, represents the um, what does Aka mean? I, I know what Aka means, I just can't think of it anyway. But the Aka is what, what these chords are called, and these connect the higher consciousness and the subconscious and the subconscious to the conscious. And um, this is how we manifest experiences, how we experience the world. And so when, with the subconscious mind being memory, this can create a lot of challenges if we have tangled up issues, unresolved memories. And uh, you know, we, we begin to experience a world that isn't real, it's just a world of fear or worry or resentment or blame or guilt or criticism or judgment. And it becomes challenging. But, the high, and so what's happening is we're, we're channeling through our memory this, through our memory and having a conscious experience of something that isn't real. However, there is a way to, for the conscious mind to connect to higher consciousness. And, and by the way, in unity, we call that the race mind. That's what, that's what uh, the film wars talked about it as the race mind, but the conscious mind. The, the higher consciousness and the subconscious mind, the memory is unity, or a lot of new thought authors will call this the race mind. It's the mind that we are attached to that is not directly attached to the divine consciousness. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the higher consciousness and the subconscious mind can connect. And the goal is to allow the conscious mind to experience uh, an elevation of consciousness. But this is through subtle experiences. This is why we do things like meditation or prayer because we because it's not the same it's not a direct communication it's it's more indirect and as we meditate we get more in touch with the flow of life the flow of the universe and we begin to experience the goodness of life as we you know sort of untangle our connection to the subconscious mind and eventually the goal is to unite all three minds but so Ho'oponopono is all about shifting consciousness and there's this one quote by Albert Einstein that I just love I'm sure you've heard it before but he, he said we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them and I mean that's just true I mean this is you know if we're experiencing a problem it was our past thinking whether it's, it's a social, at the social level or an individual level, it was the past thinking that created the experience. And so that's really what Ho'oponopono is talking about. And um, going a little bit further, there are four bodies that are being reconciled within the Ho'oponopono tradition. And the four bodies are the physical body. And the, through the physical body, we can experience the higher consciousness, which is the spiritual body, the conscious mind, which is the mental body, and the subconscious mind, which is the emotional body. And the goal with Ho'oponopono is not to just get into higher consciousness. It's not just to, you know, it's to reconcile our physical experience, our emotional experience, 
our mental experience to the, to the spiritual, to the higher consciousness, where we are actually all interconnected in one. Does that make sense? All right. And I do want to mention there are several practices within the, uh, within the Ho'oponopono tradition, the Sith tradition. The prayer is actually just one of many, although I really, I personally use the prayer the most. I have used other methods as well, but I personally use the prayer the most because I, I personally feel that it has the most impact when we use it as a mantra, if we're going into a situation and we're using it. Oftentimes, I, I will only use the, well, what I consider the first line. Some people start with, I'm sorry. I always start with, I love you, as the first line. Because this, for me, if I'm, if I'm just beginning it, this establishes where I'm coming from, where, you know, the, the energy that I want to be in. And sometimes if I'm in a place like Unity or if I'm in a place where everything seems to be flowing really well, not that Unity always flows really well, but you know what I mean. Um, if, if I'm in an experience that's flowing really well, I actually just use this part as the mantra or I'll use this part and then the last part, which is thank you. I love you, thank you, I love you, thank you, as the mantra that I'm using. And then if I notice that there's discord of some kind, then I'll add the other lines of the prayer. But, but the I love you part really establishes where the energy that we're drawing from. And in A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, every loving thought is true. And I, it's one of my favorite lines because Jesus, if, even in the, the uh, Gospels, Jesus focused a lot on this topic of love. In fact, he said there really are only two laws. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. The goal for Jesus is love. And that's, that's why I really like to start the prayer with I love you because it establishes that mindset and it gets me connected because in love, we're all already connected. You know, there's, a, there's an aspect of each of us that is love. And so that's why I start the prayer that way. The next line is, I'm sorry. But this is not about being a sorry person. And in Ho'oponopono, this isn't even about being wrong. Because remember, Ho'oponopono means to restore right what is already right. And so the I'm sorry here... Um, Sometimes I'll teach this to uh, younger people, and I, I listen to what, how they interact with the world, and there are certain people that just, they're sorry about everything. You know, they're sorry that they're taking up space. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, and constantly I hear that from them, and I actually tell them, don't use that. That particular line of this prayer is not for you, because it's not about being sorry. It's not about being sorry that you're taking up space. In fact, our physical body is one of the bodies that we're reconciling to the higher consciousness. That's the goal. And so I'll say, I change my thinking about this. I choose to see this differently. Um, and for Hugh Len, when he was working with the criminally insane, he would read things about rapists or murderers and things like that. And he would have to reconcile that in him. He would have to face his own judgments and find inner reconciliation to find that place within him. First of all, that is love and that is already connected to the person. That's what I'm sorry about. It is all about. It's about our ability to take responsibility, not for another person's actions, but I like what Eric, Eric Butterworth said about responsibility. Responsibility is our ability to respond to something. And what we can take responsibility for is our own, our own tangled issues associated with someone, because everyone on this planet is a child of God. We all came from the same source. We're all returning to the same source. That's what this is all about. So you can say, I choose to change my thinking about this. Dr. Hugh Lin said, the practitioner must be willing to take complete responsibility for the problem situation. And remember, we're restoring what is right to what is already right. That is, he or she must be willing to see that the source of all the problems arises from erroneous thinking. Erroneous thinking. There, that's the word. Got it. <laughs> um, yeah, and so what we're doing is we're, again, restoring the, the, our perception of a situation. And it's not to say that, you know, we make the, another person right if they are truly hurting somebody. We're, we're recognizing that aspect of them that is a child of God. 
And the goal with Ho'oponopono is to change the way we're thinking about the world around us and about our experiences. There's another quote that I really like. Dr. Wayne Dyer said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so the goal with Ho'oponopono is to untangle any aspect of our thinking patterns that are not, you know, that are not serving us, that are not serving society. I have a whole list of them. There are more, but these, are, these seem to be the most common ones when I talk to people that we're all sort of dealing with. Things like fear or worry. And remember, in Ho'oponopono, these are all just, these are unresolved memories. We all learned how to be afraid. We learned through the stories that we tell each other. That's what that race consciousness is. We all learned that. That's not something that is innate to, to humankind. You know, I, I like, one of my teachers says, uh, have you ever met a cynical baby? Yeah, none of us have. <laughs> you know, jealousy. You know, thinking that oh, something out there, someone else has something that I that I want and would make my life better. Resentment and guilt. These are two huge ones. You know, if, if we've done something to someone else and we've never forgiven ourselves and cleared out that old pattern, or if somebody has done something to us and we've never cleared out that old pattern. One of the challenges with that is we do keep repeating those patterns until we finally clear it out. You know, uh, I, in, in working with people, I notice a lot of, and myself, just, you know, we, we keep recreating the same types of circumstances to give ourselves the opportunity to love. And so that's uh, resentment. You know, criticism and judgment, how we think about others, how we perceive others, and how we perceive ourselves. You know, one of the things when I, uh, especially again, when I teach younger people how to use this method, the very, one of the very first things that I do is I have them do Ho'oponopono in the mirror to themselves. And because a lot of people, when they look in the mirror, all they do is criticize themselves. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting old. I'm getting wrinkles. I'm getting, you know, my, I'm going gray or whatever, you know. I don't, there's something innately wrong with me, but that's not true. And so I'll have them do this, met, met, uh, this method in the mirror. And I had this one woman, she, uh, she in Michigan, and I taught her how to do this, do this uh, in a workshop. And I said, I went up to her specifically. I said, I want you to do this in the mirror. And I want you to do this in the mirror three times a day. And she did. And she called me up. I, it was really quickly. I mean, she called me up within, you know, three or four days. She said, you won't believe what happened. I said, I... I you got to tell me because, you know, I probably will, but you just have to tell me, right? And she said, I have had night terrors every night since I was 13 years old. And she was like 27, 28-year-old girl, woman, woman. Um, <laughs> and she says, I've had night terrors, and I've never, I've not been able to sleep. And I usually only get like three or four hours of sleep. And I slept last night the whole way through, and I didn't have a night terror. Just a few days of doing this in the mirror three times a day. And, and she said the first time she did it, she couldn't handle the I love you part. Okay. And actually, when I, when I did that workshop, I, I used the old Louise Hay. Louise Hay did mirror work, and that's where, where I've combined the Ho'oponopono. And um, <laughs> Louise would say, if you can't say I love you, say I'm willing to love you. And if you can't say I'm willing to love you, say I'm willing to like you. And if you can't say that, start with, I'm willing to learn to like you because our willingness <laughs> will motivate us forward in our ability to embody these, these principles. And so, yeah, so criticism's a big deal. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, these are all things that we've learned. These are all memories. These are all learned behaviors. You know, you've never seen a baby measure her hips to gain her self-worth because that's not a real thing. These are all things that we've learned. And desire for vengeance. And I actually put this one on here because I listen to people and, I, and we are in a time when our political landscape is so amazingly to toxic. And I, you know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not into choosing sides because I recognize, I mean, and we're unity. We, we recognize that you know, we're all one. But I really, you know, this is one of the issues that I think we need to really work through and recognize that, you know, this person that I disagree with politically, their child. They're a child of God. And I also really think that, you know, spiritual practices like what Unity teaches, like what Ho'oponopono teaches, are integral to our ability to experience a different planet. You know, there, we can't, we're not ever going to elect a political savior. It's just not going to happen. 
You know, we have to work on really ourselves. And as we work on ourselves, we will be shown what to do and the world will change. And the thing with these patterns of consciousness, whether they're patterns of love or joy or peace, or whether they're fear, worry, resentment, blame, all those, what, what happens is if we are connected already, and so if we're in a state of fear, we are connecting to the energy of fear on this planet and contributing to that. If we're in a state of vengeance, we are connecting to that state of vengeance and we are contributing to that. <laughs> well, yeah, I love Facebook. I, I post all kinds of positive stuff on Facebook. But um, yeah, if, but if we're connecting to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, forgiveness, self-control, you know, the fruit of the spirit. We're actually connecting and creating a, an energetic network around the planet. And we're contributing to that energy. And that's why mindfulness of, you know, where am I at right now? Am I, am I living from memory? Am I freaking out because there's a global pandemic? It's very funny. I was talking to my husband yesterday. Um, we, I, I watched a dystopian television show, and I usually don't watch things like that, because I was always so negatively affected by that. And I said, you know, all I had to do was live through a year of dystopia. <laughs> now I'm not afraid of that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm immune. And, you know, I took a lot of help on a bono, but, you know, it worked. But yeah, I mean, you know, the, this, is, this is what the goal is. It's the goal is to establish a link to the divine, the source of all things. And, you know, the, A Course in Miracles says, if we knew who walked with us on this path that we have chosen, fear would be impossible. And that's the goal with Ho'oponopono or any authentic spiritual path. God, that's powerful. What was that word that you used, that, that program you, you, that you watched? Oh, dystopian. So it was, uh, that's, I'll tell you about it later. I'll explain it later. Dystopian is just sort of like, uh, you know, books or literature or television shows or movies that are sort of, um, anybody else want to explain it? The Road, for yeah, example. Yeah, but I don't know it's if she's the ever... the opposite of utopian. Yeah, yeah. utopian is like where everything is good. Dystopian is where things have crumbled. Like yes. the, walk, the Walking Dead, that's dystopian. That's very much so. Yeah. Okay. Please forgive me. Oh, <laughs> please forgive me. And this is really the goal, is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. The goal is always forgiveness. And uh, this just means this is how we untangle things. And even if we're just using this as an internalized mantra in our mind, we're, you know, we're untangling it because we're all connected. As I was saying with the, you know, the, these experiences within consciousness, we're always connected universally. And so the forgiveness is the aspect where we're untangling things. And I don't know, you know, I, I always make parallels because I've studied so many different spiritual paths and religions. I just like to make parallels, but to me, the uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me, reminds me of unity's denials and affirmations. And we're, we're, oh, that is not, that does not influence me. This is what is true about me. And so I, I actually put two different versions on things. If you have issues with, I'm sorry, because there, I've met a lot of people who have issues where they need to, you know, they need to clear out some baggage regarding those words. But here are some other things that you could say. Uh, one is from Louise Hay. She said she always used to say, "I'm willing to release this pa the pattern in co my consciousness that is contributing to this condition." I'm going to say that again. I am willing to release the pattern in my consciousness that is contributing to this condition. Yeah, and so that could be replaced with, "I'm sorry, please forgive me." Another one that I really love is uh, Dr. David Hawkins. He's he's one of my favorite authors, and he said. I cancel any belief in, and then whatever you're experiencing, fear, worry, resentment, blame, you know, I cancel my belief in that. Could it even be a condition? I cancel my belief in headaches. I cancel my belief in whatever. He actually uses this for physical healing. He used it for himself for miraculous physical healing. He, he was at the point where he could not really eat any foods because he seemed to be allergic to everything. And he used this to release all that, and then he went, you know, moved into a place where he was able to eat just about anything. So, I am subject, but I'm subject only to, oh, my apologies. Oh, just a sec. You go back. This is what it's supposed to say. I cancel any belief in this thing. I am subject only to that which I hold in mind. I am an infinite being, and in truth, I am not subject to that, and that is a fact. 
Yeah. And then the final phrase in this is thank you. Thank you is establishing that this is something that's already complete. It's already done. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to strive for it. Thank you is just recognizing that this, there is something greater than this conscious experience that we're having, that we're experiencing through these subtle, that manna, that subtle experience, that meditative experience. There's something else that is perpetuating uh, a new experience. And I actually want to tell a story. I volunteered a lot at homeless shelters. I think, if I have time, I might tell two stories. But, um, I was volunteering at a homeless shelter at one time. And uh, it was a couple of years after Matt and I got married. And uh, I said my husband. And I was volunteering at a Christian organization. And I saw this woman glance at me. And I felt daggers. I felt this just this overwhelming amount of hatred. And I was going, I almost responded, and then I was like, wait, ho'oponopono. <laughs> and they just started going, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. I love you, and I just did that. And about an hour later, there was this group sharing time. And I just kept doing it, and I wasn't even really directing at her, I was just directing it at the experience itself, but then she started talking, and she started talking about something that was difficult for her, she was, that she was experiencing. She was a volunteer, but she was just sharing with everyone about this difficult thing that she was experiencing. And I just kept doing it, I looked right at her, and I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. I love you, I'm sorry, please. And her eyes connected with mine, and the entire time she shared, she was, we were looking at each other directly in the eyes. And it was a 10-hour shift, and I think it was like three hours after that. I noticed she was shaking, but she was trying to calm me over, but she, she was trembling like this. She said, come over here, come over here. And I said, oh, okay, you know, and I said, hey, what's up? And then she started crying, and she said to me, remember, she's evangelical Christian. She said to me, you know, when I first met you, when I first saw you, the devil told me, that you did not have a right to exist on this planet. Wow. wow. But I recognize that that is a lie, and will you forgive me? You have to remember, we did not have any words. Nothing was, nothing was spoken between us. But I felt that energetically. And then she felt what I was doing energetically, and it shifted the experience. Wow. That's the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, that's the Holy Spirit. And so um, the other story, and this is, this is kind of another shelter experience. Um, I was going through a really difficult time in my life. And I was, I was emotionally just distressed. I mean, I had, my teacher had passed away. My dad had passed away. I was not doing the greatest financially. I mean, there was just a lot of difficulties going on. And I realized that I just needed to volunteer because that tends to like, you know, clear things out for me. I don't know, you know, if you guys have ever experienced that, but that if I just do something of service, it tends to just bring me back to where I need to be. And so I, thought I was volunteering for a shelter and I was using Ho'oponopono. And if you've ever heard me speak, you may know this story, but um, I, there's this book, this log book, that they wanted us to write all of the experiences of the night down, if there were any problems or anything. And so the first night that I volunteered there, I read it, and I had met this gentleman. He seemed very nice. He was one of the residents there. And there was something really nasty about him in there. I closed the book and said, I'm not reading that, you know. And I had the opportunity. I mean, most shelters, they never have enough volunteers. So, and I, was, and I had a lot of free time. <laughs> so I was volunteering, you know, three or four nights a week, like 10-hour shifts. And uh, I was like, I'm not reading that. And then I would always write in there. Everything was perfect because that was my experience of the night. And I, after volunteering there for, I believe, a couple of months, one of the residents came up to me, a regular resident, came up to me and he was crying. I said, dude, what's wrong? And he said, I know what you do. I said, what do you mean by that? He says, I know what you do. He said that he, he, when I'm not there, there's violence. Sometimes there's weapons. The police are always called. There's, uh, you know, there's fights. There's nobody gets along. He said, but when you're here, that, that never happens. That never happens when you're here. 
Now, I wasn't, I was just using Hope on Open during this time. And really, I was using it for myself because I was going through a difficult time. And my feelings were not lined up with what I was, I just knew the only way I can deal with this is I have to untangle whatever is going on. And so as I was volunteering, I just constantly used Hope on Open. And so I, I grabbed the logbook and I looked back and he was right. Almost every time I wasn't there, there was violence, the police were called, there were drugs found, they called in the sniffing dogs, there were all of these things. And but my experience was completely different. And I, and I like that story because I wasn't in this emotionally great place at the time. I was a mess. I was just, I was just doing the practice. You know, I was just like, I know that this will eventually clear itself out. And so uh, just to close, ooh, is it okay if we go a little bit over? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, just to close, um, I, I have, Karen Drucker does a song that is Ho'oponopono, and I, and I just want each of us to, you know, if we have something that's not working in life, or we have something that, you know, we're observing that maybe we have a criticism or a judgment about, just kind of like bring that up and then just really listen to this meditation, this song that Karen Drucker does, and, um, you know, and just try it out. Try out the Ho'oponopono prayer, so... Just, we are so fortunate to have James and, and um, all the expertise that he brings to the church. Here. And uh, I was sitting there just eating up every word. I really was. And I, I hope all of you online can really uh, feel the energy that we had here in class for that anyway, too. So, again, thank you. Um, I just want to point out, we uh, survive here by energy. <laughs> And uh, that energy we have to have in the form, obviously, of funding for the church, you know, to keep, uh, keep the doors open and keep all the great messages that we have going on here at Unity of Springfield. So uh, you can uh, support our ministry, your ministry, here at Unity of Springfield, because it is your ministry. <laughs> uh, you can get on tithely at Unity of Springfield. I'm just going to read it off the page here. Uh, you can go to PayPal at ccunity at sbcglobal.net. You can do it the old-fashioned way. You can pick up the checkbook and write a check. And, uh, of course, that would be Unity of Springfield here in Springfield, Missouri at 65804-2214 East Seminole Street here. So next week we have Amy Burnett. I don't have the title yet for her talk. I'm so excited. Amy's a phenomenal speaker, and she's also the president of our board of directors, and uh, I just look forward to having more and more and more people 